stay tuned because I have a lot of books I can show you that you may or may not have read. That was my accent. Hey everyone, I received a comment in one of my videos last week regarding which teacher books I like to read over the summer. So if you're a new teacher or a veteran teacher, stay tuned because I can promise you may or may not have read the books that I am about to show you. Before you start reading any teaching book, I suggest getting a notebook so you can write all of your ideas down because I can guarantee you're going to forget some things that come to mind as you are reading. So it's important to write them down as soon as you get them so you don't forget them and you will always have a place to refer back to when you begin teaching. This is my notebook. I got it from Target. It's so pretty. I love it. It makes me so excited to write stuff in it. And I like putting um, my notes and ideas in here from the books that I will be reading. So I think every teacher or soon to be new teacher knows about Wong's first day of school book. I was given this book in college. And as you can see, I've already read it this summer and I have tabbed some ideas and some areas of improvement that I need to make for this upcoming school year. This is a great book for brand new teachers that will break things down, um, including schedule, management, anything you need. I think this is the perfect place to start. Now, this is a older edition. So if you can get your hands on the newer edition here, and there might even be a newer edition than this one here. I received this um, from a teacher that was giving me old teaching materials, and this was just in her stack. I didn't know that there was an updated version years ago when I received this one, so it was nice to go back and see the changes that Wong made from um, the previous editions. My district offers a mentoring program, so I did receive a mentor my first three years of teaching. While going through a mentoring program, we were required once a month to meet with all of the new teachers in our district at our local tech center. While attending the mentoring program, they gave us the teacher's guide to success. Now I will be completely honest that I have not read this one all the way through. I have breezed through it because it reminded me a lot of Wong's um, first day of school book. So our district gave us these as new teachers. I'm not even sure if my district still gives out books, but if you are a new teacher looking for various information, I would suggest another one like this. It does have the same information just like Harry Wong's first day of school. If you're looking for basic ways to improve your instruction, I would suggest reading Teach Like a Pirate or Learn Like a Pirate. The word pirate is actually an acronym, and I forget what it is. <laughs> the word pirate is an acronym for passion, immersion, rapport, ask and analyze, transformation, and enthusiasm. So if you're looking for ideas to enhance your instruction, I would read Teach Like a Pirate. It is very uh, rejuvenating in your teaching if you are a veteran teacher. Um, it makes you rethink some of your lessons and improve on them. The next one was Learn Like a Pirate. I've not been able to read through this one all the way, but um, again, they've changed the word pirate to represent an acronym, and it stands for Peer Collaboration, Improvement, Focused Learning, Responsibility, Active Learning, 21st Century Skills, Empowerment. So again, it's a book to enhance your instructional strategies and how you present a lesson to the students. Okay, so I have a lot of books that I read to enhance my reading instruction, and one of those books that I got last summer was The Book Whisperer. So if you are looking for a book on how to change a child's opinion on reading, I would read The Book Whisperer. It gives you a new light and looks at reading in a new way and allows you to reflect and be able to give advice for a child who is a reluctant reader. So this is a great book for new teachers and veteran teachers for those that are struggling to get their children to love reading. The second book in reading is Reading in the Wild, and this is by the same author as the book whisperer, Donalyn Miller. They are great in giving activities that you can use with your students to enhance their reading and great ideas for you to enhance your instruction and in reading. I did just complete my fifth year in teaching, so about four years ago, Daily Five was all the rave. Daily Five is a great management tool for new teachers or veteran teachers to enhance their reading instruction. Not many teachers know how to set up a schedule or to set up their literacy block. Daily Five is a great example. You do not have to follow it to the T. It is a great representation of what you can include in your instruction or during that lesson time. Daily Five has different editions, so I would recommend getting the second edition because it has so much more information than the first. Along with Daily Five is the Cafe Book. 
I will be honest and tell you that I have not been able to use CAFE in my own classroom because I teach fifth and I just didn't see that it was reasonable at the time. However, in the primary grade levels, it's a great way to make sure that you are including comprehension, accuracy, fluency, and I think the E... Oh yeah, expanding vocabulary. I always know that it's for vocabulary, but I always forget what the E represents. So you can use it in any grade level. Um, just the method to me, it didn't, it didn't work for me in fifth grade, but I hope to read this again this summer and see if I can put it to use in my new second grade classroom. So about three summers ago, teachers on Instagram were raving about Debbie Diller's literacy stations. So I have literacy workstations making centers work um, book and I've breached through this one as well it gives you more ideas on what you can use at a station how you can run a station before during and after a station um, again it's just great ideas this is more towards primary grade levels K through 2 and then she does have one for the intermediate grade levels actually all the way up to grade 6 so this is the primary one I'll show it and then this is the intermediate one. Again, she has great examples of stations that you can use in your classroom, how to set them up, how to manage them, how to manage the materials, which materials you need, and how to set students up for success using stations. When I first began teaching, I had a teacher give me all of her stuff. She was moving to middle school, so she had a ton of elementary school to get stuff to give me. And with that stuff, I would find things here and there that I'd like to keep, and then I would just move it on to the next teacher, or I would pitch it or donate it or whatever. One of those books that I kept was the Four Block Literacy Model. And this model just flows for any reading program. It includes shared or guided reading, self-selected reading, writing, and working with words. And so those are the four blocks. This is so old, but after reading this like five years ago and then using the reading programs that we're using now and reading the new teacher instructional method books that I read now, it all stems back to this literacy block. So if you can get your hands on this, it is pretty old, but it's very similar to the other books that I showed you. The other reading programs that you've probably heard of that require you to include certain aspects in your literacy block, they all stem from like the same type. They may just look a little bit differently. Going back to Debbie Diller, she not only has literacy workstations, but math workstations. And this book I definitely have to read this summer because it pertains to second grade, which is my new grade level. I couldn't really use this as much in um, fifth grade or higher, and that's because the stations are tailored more towards the primary grades, and as you can see, it's K through 2. Um, but for lower level learners, that's why I purchased it, and it may have some good ideas for your intermediate grade levels. Last summer, number talks were all the rave, so I picked up Making Number Talks Matter. I got through about the first chapter and definitely saw that I needed to keep reading. I just got way too busy over the year and wasn't able to finish this book, but it's definitely on my summer reading list. It goes through how to present certain numbers or certain problems to a child and the ways that they can access the problem. We go over the ways that they can access and analyze and evaluate, and it gets students really thinking about what they're thinking about. So a lot of metacognition, and it's just a great book for teachers and I think parents to understand the Common Core curriculum, how there's more than one way to access a problem. So this summer, all the teacher rave is about these reading and writing strategy books by Jennifer, I think it's Cervello? I'm not sure. And I have not been able to read these thoroughly, nor do I think I ever will. But let me tell you, I will be using this to, not to a T, but I will be using this next year. So there are anchor charts and lesson plans for every strategy and skill that you can think of that you will need to teach your child for writing and reading. I am so excited to be using these next year. It's just laid out so nicely and organized so well that it doesn't overwhelm you. So if you are a new teacher or a um, reoccurring teacher, I would recommend getting these or asking to put these in your classroom media center 
for access because I can't tell I mean look like it has the skill up top here and then it'll go through your objectives and it'll tell you the purpose for it how to implement the lesson and then it even gives you an anchor chart so I'm so excited to use this during small groups and part of mini lessons during my whole group back to Debbie Diller again she has making the most out of small groups differentiating your instruction now this is a great resource for those of you that are struggling with differentiation differentiation is so important because no matter the grade level you need to give your students access to problems and the only way to do so is differentiating the work now does that does not mean making it easier you keep the rigor the same you just have to provide them different access and this book really helps you with that she goes through and gives you a before during and after um, approach to small group lesson plans and she's included lesson plans in materials in the book so she has everything from choosing the materials that you'll need to the actual lesson plan and the only thing that I didn't like about this book is it's definitely like set up kind of boring like it's, it's not colored or anything so there's the lesson plan so that's the only thing like this looked like one of those instructional manuals that you don't want to read but it is full of great information the next few books are not just for teachers they are for parents as well now I know this has changed over the years and there are different editions I don't plan on buying the book for what your second grader needs to know because I'm changing grade levels I don't plan on buying it um, but if you're a parent this is a great resource for what your child is expected to know by the end of fifth grade it just gives you basic information but it's it's good it's a nice car read or like having discussions with your child at the dinner table like what they know about I don't know the different lakes like some of our children don't know the states and capitals and it's sad it's so sad and I know I really looked at the viewfinder with that one because I'm very passionate about some information that students just need to know along with what your fifth grader needs to know um, my school gets books are fun which is a program where a person comes in from a company and puts out different resources and materials on our like um, in our lunchroom and we're allowed to purchase them within books are fun it's not just books either it's like all sorts of stuff but I got help your kids with language arts and I got help your kids with math my mom actually got these for me and I haven't been able to read them all the way through but as I um, browsed through them they are full of great information and I love the layout of them but they just give you like basic information about like capital letters like when do you need to capitalize a letter when do you need to use a hyphen when do you need to use a comma when do you need to use an interjection like what is an interjection um, how do you add how do you multiply what is an obtuse angle what is a scaling triangle like so different topics like that um, not really skills and strategies but more these focus more on content this next book is focusing more on being a mentor teacher so this year I decided to let my principal know that I would be happy to take on a mentee so I will be a mentor to a brand new teacher and I plan on giving my mentee this book it's 101 answers for new teachers and their mentors and this helped me tremendously when I was a first year teacher it just has basic questions that you will probably ask throughout the year and given answers within the text so um, if you're thinking of being a mentor here you go and it gives you a lot of instructional ideas and um, behavior management ideas as well okay so the next few books have to deal with behavior management and I don't live by these books by any means I have my own behavior management plan in my classroom but these have given me some ideas and some changes to my thinking so a lot of I think p people who are not in the education field or have not been teaching in a classroom have a hard time understanding why children behave the way that they do there are ways to manage the classroom so a great book that I would recommend to a lot of teachers is understanding poverty um, this was a great eye-opener for teachers that work in low-income er areas or just want to understand the child's mind when coming from poverty. Um, I think a lot of teachers don't understand what is poverty or what can stem from poverty. So if you're interested in understanding a child's mind in the classroom more when they come from poverty, I recommend this book wholeheartedly. 
This book I got for free. I actually won it during a PD session that I was attending, but it's really good. Shouting doesn't grow. Shouting won't go dendrites. Okay. So this just basically summed up that shouting is not the answer. We have so many teachers that will shout at their students in the classroom and it will not work, period. Shouting does not work. So this was a great book for teachers that don't understand that yelling at a child is not going to get them to do what you want them to do. Um, stop shouting and start teaching. Another great behavior management that I received, um, I think I got this in college, was the reluctant disciplinarian. And it's somebody who is shy but wants to be a teacher and you have to have control over your classroom when you are a teacher. So if you are an introvert, I would suggest this reluctant disciplinarian book. The last book that I have to tell you about is You Have to Go to School, You're the Teacher. And this is 250 classroom management tips that you can use in your classroom. Some of these I will say are outdated. Some of these will work for one child. Some of these will work for an entire classroom. But this is a good read and it's a good eye opener for you to understand that there are all different types of learners in your classroom. Therefore, there are all different types of students that you have to manage because they have all different types of personalities. So I look at it this way. When you go to a PD session and the professor turns on a PowerPoint and you're thinking, oh, I have to sit here and look at this PowerPoint. That's probably what your students are doing too. If not all of them, maybe one or two of them. So you have to update your instruction daily. You have to get them engaged. You can do all sorts of things. If part of your lesson requires a PowerPoint, do it. But make sure you may have some music and dance involved or something. Do what you would want to have in your classroom. You don't, if you don't want to go in and just sit and watch a PowerPoint, don't make your classroom instruction that way either. So I hope you were able to find a text that you will read this summer. Let me know if you choose to read one this summer in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on it and maybe we can start some dialogue. So if you like this video and you want to see more book suggestions, give this video a thumbs up down below. If you'd like to just see me in my life as a teacher, subscribe to this channel and you will be getting some more videos soon. Bye guys.